it's always been the dream of anyone that does dialysis interventions to create a dialysis access percutaneously. My name is Deirdre Trajan. I'm uh, an interventional radiologist at the University of Toronto. I'm Dr. Samuel Stearman. I'm a vascular surgeon, and we're here at Virginia Beach General Hospital. I'm Stephen Homan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm Dr. Micah Chan with the uh, University of Wisconsin. I'm uh, Conrad Pun uh, with Interventional Radiology. My name is Ahmad Kamel. I'm the uh, Division Director of Interventional Radiology. I'm a nephrologist that specializes in interventional nephrology. I'm a vascular surgeon. I've been practicing about nine and a half years. I'm Dr. David Peeler. I'm the Medical Director at the University of Vascular Access Center in Memphis, Tennessee. These patients are some of the most underserved patients in America. They really are and that this is really a passion for a lot of physicians who have come to it, you know, and just like us. And it's really nice to see that there's a big commitment to these patients from all over and from, from various specialties. It's tough being on dialysis. You have to go to dialysis treatment centers three times a week for multiple hours, and it's not uncommon to have multiple procedures necessary to keep their access working and keep them alive, really. It is very important for patients who have renal failure uh, to maintain their dialysis access, especially if they are on hemodialysis. So um, uh, there is a role for creating the dialysis uh, circuits where dialysis occurs. Right now, the Wavelink will give us the option of two percutaneous fistula options, the ulnar artery, ulnar vein, and then uh, radial artery and radial vein. The Wavelink is definitely a, an extra tool in the armamentarium of creating AV fistula. Uh, it allows us to create the fistula at a location uh, uh, that is um, not usually created surgically, and it does not also deny the patients uh, the usual locations where surgical fistula can be created. You know, I don't think there's ever been a more exciting time for dialysis access than right now. Um, you attend any of the dialysis meetings in, in the end of last year, and there has never been more new things coming out. There's never been more excitement around it, and there's never been more kind of a groundswell. I think for the first time now, I have the opportunity to go to nephrologists, say, hey, listen, we've got this great technology. Send me the patients over. If they're a candidate, we'll create a fistula without an incision. With this uh, new technology, it seems uh, that there is less intervention and can be something that's a huge, huge benefit to our patients that uh, some people couldn't even get fistulas before because they couldn't tolerate uh, anesthesia or the surgery. And it gives us a whole new level of, of care to our patients that is fantastic. These patients are ones that, that, that just have terrible, terrible illnesses. Their lives have been turned upside down by the, by the onset of renal failure. And anything that we can do to make their outcomes better, to provide them a minimally invasive option, that was exciting. It's a great device. I wish I thought of it myself. <laughs> <laughs>